What's up YouTube? It's the Action Figure Grader coming back to you with a video and I know it looks like I've just got a couple of acrylic risers here and that's it and that's because I have to uh, take some of these graded comic books that I've got out of the bags. I'm going to show them. I've got the lights set really low. It's really difficult to film graded comic books is what I've found. It's, it's hard to photograph. They're hard for everything. So I, I, I haven't figured out a good solution yet for how to uh, best display them because I've, I've got a lot of natural light. The only thing I can think of is if, uh, and you can see the reflection, you can see my reflection. So it, it's, uh, the only thing I can think of is to film these at like midnight. And unfortunately I'm too old and too set in my ways to, uh, to actually get, <laughs> to actually stay up that late. So we're going to have to make do. And so I apologize for the glare. I'll have a video or, or a photo collage at the end of this video so you can take a look at some of these. But anyway, I, I, this is not the only one in this batch of recent pickups that is not Star Wars related. Everything else is Star Wars, so bear with me. But this is one I wanted to talk about. This is Dark Ages number one. This is the Comic Mint Virgin Edition. And uh, so this was a store exclusive and it was limited to a retail release of 600. So it's very, very limited. There were a bunch of different covers for this book. It's the first uh, comic book appearance of a new villain called the Unmaker. And I, I think he's going to be in the Marvel Cinematic Universe at some point in the future. He's like a Goliath Titan type thing. They've already talked about adding Colossus uh, to the MCU. So I could see this guy eventually making his appearance. But you can see it's an epic cover. And it's got all the uh, super, all the Avengers and Spider-Man and all that. Uh, they're all kind of beaten up by this guy. But anyway, uh, it's a really awesome cover. And I, it's also the first, uh, it's got the new costumes for apocalypse and vision and it's also the first time that miles morales gets venomized with the symbiote suit so it's a it's got so much going on in this book and i it sold out like in two minutes and i was lucky enough to be able to pick one of them up uh but anyway it was again limited to uh to 600 of them and so I just got this back from the Comic Mint. It was a pre-order, a, a 9.8 pre-order. The Comic Mint, by far, is the best for getting graded comic books pre-ordered. They're the only ones that ship as fast as fast can be. Everyone else is really slow. Uh, it's been my experience. So when these store-exclusive covers come up at the Comic Mint, I'm, and it's, it's, a, it's an item I, I like or I think is, is going to do well, then I usually pick it up from them. So that's enough about that. Let's get into all of the Star Wars books. And as I talked about in a recent video, uh, it looks like there's a heavy, heavy rumors that they're going to be bringing Star Wars The High Republic to movies or some kind of Disney Plus content. It's apparently going to be a movie. And so it's the early, it's one of the early eras of Star Wars in terms of canon. Uh, you know, it takes place about two or 300 years before the Clone Wars. And uh, it's got a lot of interesting characters. It took me a little while to warm up to it. Um, Charles Soule and Caven Scott are the two main writers on the novels and as well as the comics. And so this is another uh, store exclusive. This is the Frankie's Comics Virgin Edition. I think it was limited to a thousand. Don't quote me on that. It's got Keith Trennis there. It looks like it's on. She's on top of the Drengear plants that are like one of the enemies. And again, it's got the first appearance. Uh, all of this High Republic number ones, I'm not going to repeat it for every one of them, but all of the Republic, High Republic number one are the first appearance of Keeve Trennis, Skier, Loden Greatstorm, Stel Stellan Geos, and Vernestra Rowe, and I think a couple of other Jedi. But uh, this is a great cover. I, I, I actually like this one the least of all the covers I'm going to show you. But I, I think because it was a store exclusive and it's a really clean look, that I decided to add it, you know, because I think if this movie actually does happen, these limited print run comics will probably end up doing better than um, than maybe some of the, the ones that are heavily printed. And I want to emphasize that, you know, when I start talking about investing, quote unquote, in comics, I'm doing this with play money. OK, so don't like take your retirement money and, and buy a bunch of High Republic number ones. I'm doing it because, I, you know, I like collecting comics. It gives me a nice alternative to action figures. And my action figure room is really full, okay? So, I, you know, collecting comics is a nice way to still collect Star Wars stuff without taking up too much room. And I like the speculative aspect of it, I'm not going to lie, because it's almost like fantasy football, you know, where you're you're kind of investing in certain, uh, in certain 
football players, and, but in this case, it's comics. So uh, this is one that I already had in my collection, but this was so cheap on my comic shop that I had to grab it. Somebody listed it for like way below, I think, market. I think I got it for 60 bucks. Uh, and I was, and I bought a bunch from my comic shop. So, you know, when I spread the shipping out across five books, it was a no brainer to pick this up for 60 bucks. And, you know, you don't pay, you don't pay the stupid eBay, you know, sale, state sales taxes. So this is my, my, probably my favorite cover from High Republic number one. This is the Stephanie Hans variant cover. Again, it's all the first appearances that we've talked about, but I already had this one in my collection, but you know, once I saw the news and it's it's screen rant i believe was the person who broke it but apparently they are in the works you know in the next couple of years to be making a both a high republic movie as well as the uh, star wars the old republic so I, I did pick up some really epic books as as part of that so here's the other one that i had so i've got two of those now and um i don't know i think if i'm going to get doubles of any of these covers this was the one i wanted to get doubles of just because it shows avar chris and Yoda on the cover, two of the main heroes. Avar Chris, but you know, I've talked about this in other videos, but Avar Chris's first full comic or first cameo appearance was in Rise of Kylo Ren number three. That book has really gone up a lot. You could get it for like a hundred bucks or not even a hundred dollars a few months ago. Now it's like 150 or more. So that's one that I really want to get, but it, man, it's jumped up a lot in price. But anyway, I think, I, you know, I paid like 68 for one of these and I paid 60 for the other one. So it was a no brainer to buy it when I saw it, especially when I could spread the shipping, the shipping expense across, across multiple books. So that is that one. And then I got a few other covers that I'll show you. Uh, this was the, a, a variant cover for High Republic number one. This is the Ario and I can't pronounce his name, Anandito cover. He actually commented on, on my, on my Instagram post for this one and said, uh, you know, may the force be with you. So that was kind of cool to have the cover artist respond. I didn't even tag him on it. He just found it. And, uh, so that was pretty cool that he, uh, he responded and, and said, may the force be with you. So, uh, but this is what my, probably one of my favorite covers also, other than the Walmart cover, which if I think about it, I'll put it down here. The Walmart variant cover is really good as it was only available at Walmart. I've been meaning to get that one. I just haven't got it yet. But, uh, in terms of some of the other covers, this is one of my favorites. It shows, uh, Keith Trennis, and the twins, I can't remember their names off the top of my head, uh, Sarret and Terret, and then um, Terek, and then Skier. And then it has the plant-based monster, which is called the Drengear. It's like a sentient plant-based form that takes over planets and they fight. So uh, this is one of my favorite covers also because it, it, it's the first cover appearance of the Drengear, uh, I believe, unless it, was, unless it showed up in High Republic Adventures, the other alternate book there. So that's that one, and let's see what else we got. I also have uh, some of the later printings, or at least one of them. Let's see. I've got uh, this one. I think is the second print. Yeah, this is the second print. I don't like this cover as much. It's okay though. I mean, it, it shows the Jedi holding their um, holding their lightsabers up. I assume that's in Starlight Beacon, which is like in the books. It's like the outer ter outer rim territory kind of headquarters for the Jedi, or you know. Uh, what do we look like an embassy, if you will, for the Jedi, so they can respond to emergencies quicker. But I think that's where they're supposed to be taking place. It's supposed to be in Starlight Beacon, but it shows Keith Trinis and all the other Jedi, Skier, Stellan Geos, and um, anyway. So that that's the that's the second printing. It's okay. It's not. I, I don't like that nearly as much as the other ones that we just that I just showed you. But um, not bad. Not bad. I'm kind of rotating these out as we as we go here and uh the other one i picked up that i like a lot and i think has a lot of potential is the one in ten variant so you know these retail incentive variants the retail incentive variants they you know if you buy one of a book you know if the comic shop buys one of a book or ten of a book then you get the retail incentive variant as part of that so this is the retail incentive variant the one in ten for high republic number one there was a one in 25 also i don't know if there's any higher print ratios for the retail incentives. I don't like the one in 25 as much as I like this one. This is, again, the one in 10. It's got Lorna D, who's one of the sidekick villains to the, the main villain to start is in the High Republic is Marcian Rowe. Lorna D is one of kind of her lead henchmen. I really like her as a character a lot in the books. And I guess this is one of the, um, 
uh, one of the other kind of pirates, I can't remember, not, my brain is not working right now, but, you know, the Nihil, Nihil, thank you. The Nihil are, uh, you know, the main kind of pirate group that is, serves as the main enemy early on in the books. So you got a lot of different factions going on in the High Republic and a lot of different ways they could go with in the books, or excuse me, in the movie. You could you got the Nihil with Martian Rowe leading them, and Lorna D is one of the kind of storm uh, which is like a hench, you know, one of the tr trifecta of leaders for the Nihil. So you got them, you got the Drengear, and then later on in, in Star, Star Wars High Republic number seven, they introduce a new Sith called Darth Krall. And I've got those books as well. And I didn't pull them out for this video, but given my propensity to keep buying graded, <laughs> graded comic books, I'm sure that I'll just show it to you at a future video. I've got another one here uh, that I think I've already shown in a different video, but I gave it to my brother for his birthday. But this is Star Wars number 14, the Mike Mayhew Studio Virgin Edition. This is the homage cover uh, to Star Wars 42, the first appearance of Boba Fett. And so this is the Virgin version. I, I, I gave one, I, I got one graded and I gave that to my brother. I think that was the trade version that I gave to my brother. I actually like that one better than this one. It, it looks better with the Star Wars logo, I think, up top. But... Uh, it's, don't get me wrong. I'm not complaining. This is a really nice book. It's, it looks really cool. But anyway, so that's the version. I still have a trade dress coming, but I, I did have a trade dress graded myself by CGC. It came back in 9.8. And uh, that one is uh, that one is now in my brother's collection. I gave it to him for his birthday. But I, I do have another one that I pre-ordered that it just takes forever. Now we're going to get, we're going to finish off with some really, really big books that I have added to my collection and ones that I've been targeting for a while and it took moving some funds around it took selling some stuff but I did add a couple of really epic key issue books that I've talked about in past updates and here's one of them uh, this is Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic number 42 Dark Horse Comics from 2009 this is the origin of Revan um, one of the more epic covers from Knights of the Old Republic series and it, they just did an homage on this book that says Fett Unleashed in War of, uh, War of the Bounty Hunters, the, the newest series by Marvel. So they did uh, a cover homage of this one that says Fett, Fett Unleashed, and it has Boba Fett, you know, flying up. So this is what that, that book was. And if I remember, I'll put a, a picture of that down here. But this is what that, that book is based on. It's based on this one, Malak Unleashed, Knights of the Old Republic. This is a really big book, and, you know, that's the other kind of era that that Screen Rant has said that that is in the works right now another Knights of the Old Republic or a Knights of the Old Republic movie they, they just re-released the video game I believe um, by limited run for the Nintendo Switch so um, it just seems like it's a no-brainer given the popularity of Revan uh, they, they've, they've certainly released video you know uh, Black Series figures the GameStop exclusive Darth Revan they released the archive series version, black series version of Revan, and they need to explore Revan on the big screen or uh, on Disney Plus. So I think it's a matter of time before that happens. And his first full appearance book, which is, I believe is Knights of the Old Republic 9, that's very, very pricey. It's it's over $1,000 and, and outside my budget for, at the time, you know, I, I just had other focus, which I'll show you in a second. <laughs> Uh, but for me, this was the next best option, uh, was orig the origin of Revan, Knights of the Old Republic 42. You can also look at Star Wars Tales number 23, I believe is the number. That is the first cameo of Malak and Revan. That one is, is more affordable than even this one. So this is kind of the mid-range book, but uh, I think the, by far the best cover. Uh, you know, Knight Knights of the Old Republic 9 with, with Revan on the cover is probably the best, but this is probably second best. Uh, but, an, but an amazing book, and one of my top five now in my graded CGC collection. Um, okay, now we've got the, the, the main one. Uh, this is, for me, uh, a Holy Grail type of book that I've, I've, I've always wanted in my collection in a 9.8 grade. And it's very difficult to get this in, in such a high grade. There are only 252 of these on the CGC census. And that is Star Wars Heir to the Empire number one. And that is, of course, Dark Horse from 1995. This is the first comic book appearance of Mara, J Mara Jade, uh, Joris Seaboth, and then obviously Grand Admiral Thrawn. I'm a huge Thrawn fan, as you guys know. I've got the Black Series figure, the SDCC version in the background there. 
And I've always been a huge fan. I've read all the books of all the new trilogies, uh, of course, all the old Era of the Empire books. And uh, this was one that I, I've been targeting for a while. And, it, you know, I, like I said, I had to I had to move some some collecting items around to make this one happen. But uh, the price had gotten up back in June, uh, May, you know, April, May, June time frame. It got it got well above uh, my comfort level for a single book. And it, I, I ended up getting the price I paid for this was about 40 percent of the market high for Heir to the Empire number one. So I felt very comfortable at that price point, uh, finally getting this book. And this is easily my, my most fa my favorite, um, my favorite CGC Star Wars book, um, you know, a holy grail for me personally. So very happy to have Heir to the Empire number one in a 9.8. And I'll put the census down here if I think about it. Um, it's just a very, very difficult book to get in a 9.8 grade. As I, as I said, there's only nine, uh, 251, I believe, the last time I checked, Blue Label and Signature Series 9.8s out there out of all the books that have been graded for, for this one. So to have one of 251 9.8s is a, is a pretty awesome, awesome deal for me. And, uh, you know, just, just an awesome, awesome book, awesome cover, and um, truly iconic, really. So... Very happy to add this one. As I said, I'll, I'll include, um, you know, kind of a, a, a photo collage of all of these books uh, at the end of this video. But let me know your thoughts. And if you guys have any big picks or big comics that you're looking to pick up and uh, where you think the market goes from here. I think, we're, you know, right now we're just at the very beginning of an uptick in books. It seems like the Star Wars comic market is just heating back up after a nice three or four or five month lull. And I wanted to get this one before Ahsoka hit, because I think once Ahsoka hits, there's zero, zero chance I could have been able to acquire this one at the price I got it for. So anyway, that's all I really had for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Thanks again, and I'll be back soon.